All right. So we're started back up. Um, so we've gone over the exam. And what we're going to do today is we'll wrap up uh, chapter 14 in terms of the, the notes that we have. And then uh, if we have time, we'll take a look at um, one of the homework problems in terms of using the plots and using level rules with it a little bit. Um, We've already talked about the final. Just reiterate one more time. Uh, final will be cumulative. Um, five problems. One of those will be short answers, um, concepts, and things like that. Let's say short answers. It could be probably multiple choice and, and things like that, fill-ins, some short fill-ins. Um, two problems on the last material that we've covered, and then two problems from previous material that we've covered in the course. And so what all have we covered, right? Um, we start off with just some basic ideas of material balances and things like that, and then we jumped into chapter 15, right, where we looked at mass transfer. Um, we looked at diffusion equations. We looked at some specific cases of that. Um, we looked at evaluating um, mass transfer coefficients. Um, using correlations, we looked at things like um, Stefan flows, um, and so on. And then from there, what did we do? We started back and we were jumping into what? Doing flash distillations, right? And then we started looking at column distillations. Did overall balances, that was chapter three. Chapter four, we got into the real details of it, and that led us into things like McCabe Teeley method, doing all those analyses. Um, and then we jumped into chapter five, where we looked at multi component systems, um, at least from an overall point of view, right? So that's where we start talking about keys. And, just generally conceptually what happens in those systems. And then we skipped over to chapter seven, um, where we looked at some shortcut methods for being able to do these multi-component uh, distillation problems. And then from there, we jumped over to chapter 10 and we looked at sizing. Um, so that was both with tray type columns and with pack type columns. And then we went over to um, chapter 12 and we looked at um, absorption and stripping type problems. And we learned about using McCabe Teeley there, we learned about using Kremser methods. And then we jumped over into chapter, I guess we just went to the next chapter, chapter 13, where we looked at liquid-liquid extractions. And now we're doing uh, our last section on leaching and washing as a kind of a special case of that. So the last material then that we've covered since the last exam would be liquid-liquid extractions and uh, washing and leaching, of course, okay? Um, we'll have, um, I'll have an exam review in here on uh, Thursday from 9 till noon in this classroom. I have it reserved. Um, so if you want to take a look at old tests, you're, you're welcome to do so that day, okay? On... Uh, Wednesday, we'll meet and we'll just do uh, course evaluations, game plan, okay? So, questions about the final? Anything related to that? Like I said, I, I will allow ample time. Um, it's easily designed to be done within two hours, but I'll give you three if you really want it. Right. So, um, if there's no questions then, let's just go ahead and finish up uh, chapter 14, um, at least the slides that I have for you. 
Um, we had started a problem where we, um, we would like to have some sand, but it has seawater mixed in with it that has some salt on it. We need to get rid of the salt. And so the desired product that we want out of this is the sand, right? Um, the solute is the salt, which is essentially tied to water in the form, obviously, here of seawater. And that's what we'd like to um, displace from the sand. Right? So, so it's, it's really a, a washing type problem here. Um, so one of the first things that we did is we made a sketch last time. Um, and from that, we were starting to do some of our mass balances and so on with this. And so I think that's where we left off. So we're at this point now. Um, for this problem, it's a washing problem, which means that when we come to equilibrium at one of our stages, the salt concentration in the underflow and the overflow ought to be the same. Right? That's our equilibrium condition. That's why we have y equals x, just kind of as a reminder. We also have then an operating line that's in the same form that we've been using um, for problems like even going back to like absorption and so on. Um, for us, we went through an analysis here where we noted that for 1,000 cc's of wet sand, um, what would be um, the overflow and what would be the underflow? Remember, those are liquid values that we're talking about for this. So we can calculate the ratio of the underflow to overflow. We can use that then with our operating equation up here. Um, And I think we're at the, the point here where we went ahead and used the, um, did an overall kind of, kind of mass balance here to evaluate what the concentration up here at the overflow coming out would be. And so we got a Y1 value. Okay. All right. So I think at this point, then, we're ready to go ahead and let's fill in, then, what our actual, then, operating line um, looks like for us. And I don't think we've done that yet. Let me just skip ahead here. Yeah, we need to do that. In fact, let's do it on this slide. I think we have some room here that we can go ahead and fill that out. So if we were to finish this off here, then we would have y is equal to 0.8x plus then 0 minus 0 0.8 times our x sub n value, which was 0 0.002. Or in other words, it says that y is equal to 0.8x minus 0 0.0016. So now given an expression for the operating line, given an expression for the equilibrium line, we're at a point where we can go ahead and construct a McCabe-Teeley plot. And so here's, here's a, a McCabe-Teeley plot for us. Um, we've got our operating line here shown in blue. Oh, excuse me, equilibrium line shown in blue. We've got our operating line below it. Um, when I made this plot up, again, since we've gotten into lots of practice, this should be kind of old hat at this point, I, I would hope, right? Um, I chose to start counting off the, the, uh, the stages from the bottom down here. Um, and so you count them off, you get up here to six, and to get to where we actually need to be, we still need part of a stage here. Okay. And so estimating this, this is about halfway, actually. So 
I got a little bit more exact when I actually did it this way, but, um, but it's about six and a half stages um, required for it. So let's, um, let's go back. Let's finish this off. So we'll say um, from plot need 6.5 stages. I mean, we've already figured out the outlet concentration. Let's um, let's go ahead and also do this instead of using the plot. Let's do a Kremser equation on this. So let's do a Kremser analysis with the same problem. Okay. So Kremser. Um, again, we got lots of choices on the Kremser equations. You can go and look up a variety of them. Uh, what do we know at this point? Um, if we're going to apply Kremser equation, just so that just so that we know, um, when we translate these things, the L value corresponds to the overflow or the underflow. Let's go back and look at this. The underflow, I would agree with that. So L corresponds to the underflow, which means V corresponds to the overflow. So when you use the, the, the Kremser equations, make sure we keep track of that. Okay. I looked at some of the values that we have here um, and that we already know. Um, you can choose to do lots of different things. In terms of the equilibrium um, relationship, we need a, a, an M value, right? So in this case, M value is 1. That's easy for us. Um, it's sort of a toss-up given the various values that we've already calculated. I chose to go ahead and use the following Krems equation. I said I'm going to choose to use N is equal to the natural log of let's say x sub n minus x sub n star divided by x naught minus x naught star divided by the natural log of u over m o. Now what I've seen some people do sometimes, rather than just use capital O for the overflow, sometimes people use o sub o v just to kind of distinguish it from zero. But then again, we've got V, so you got to make sure you think of it as lowercase v and not zero times capital V. So I, I don't know. Pick and choose. Just remember, pay attention to some of that when you're doing it. Um, so we know for our system that y is equal to x, so that means m is equal to 1. We need xn star. And that would be given by what? What variables? Y n plus one, and technically divided by m, which is one, which is zero over m, which is zero. And then we need x naught star, and that would be equal to what? y1 over m. And in this case, m is 1, so it's just equal to y1, which is 0 0.0264. And then, of course, we already had previously, we had found that x sub n was equal to 0 0.002. And 
x naught was equal to 0 0.035. So at this point then we can just substitute values in. We've got the natural log then of 0 0.002 minus 0 divided by 0 0.035 minus 0 0.0264 divided by the natural log of u over o, in this case, um, was equal to what, 0 0.8, divided by 1. And we evaluate this, and we get 6.54. Stages. So the two methods then agree again with this. Okay. Any questions, comments, thoughts, anything about it? Okay. Um, you if you have one additional problem you can try out, right? Um, I gave you the answer for it as well, so you can check and make sure if you're getting it. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, um, but I thought what we could do here in the remaining time is I would like to take a quick look at using these triangular plots um, and just using lever rule, just kind of walking through, uh, particularly the maybe the second homework problem, which is a little bit more involved, right? Because you had um, two units associated with it. So I'm going to give you a plot. And I did put some lines on here, and I, I tried to scan it in color, but the lines apparently were too thin, and the, the scanner didn't come out the best for me. But um, we'll take a look at it. So this is that second homework problem. And if you recall, in this problem, we were going to use water to extract acetone from an acetone MIBK mixture. And that mixture is coming in at a rate of 200 kilograms per hour, and we've got water coming in to the first unit, 300 kilograms per hour. And then we're going to take the raffinate off of that and we're going to feed it into a second extraction unit. Add 300 kilograms uh, per hour more of water to that, pull raffinate stream off of it, and then we're going to take the two extract streams and ultimately combine them. For a problem like this, you know, it's, it's a matter of doing mass balances and using equilibrium data that we have, right, that, that shows up on, on this plot. What I'd like to do is at least point out some of the things that you can do. Um, if you don't want to do lots of calculations in terms of mass balances, you can do those mass balances directly on these plots for the most part. All right, so, so here's how that you can, we can think about approaching this. For the first extraction unit, we're coming in with pure water, right? So pure water puts us right down in here. The other stream comes in at 30% acetone and 70% um, MIBK. Well, that puts us along this line over here. And so we can locate that point. Right here is 70% MIBK. Coming up this way, we're at 30% acetone. So that locates two points which means that the mixture has to lie along a line between those two points. So that means then that we can draw a straight line between those two points. And then we can apply our lever rule. Because we know the rates at which those two streams are coming in. We know that there's more water, pure water coming in, right? So that means that the mixture point is going to be closer to the pure water point. 
And the way the lever rule works is that you would take the amount, let's say, of that water stream and divide it by the total amount, right? And that would tell you what? How far you are on this side. If you took the MIBK stream, which was 200, divided it by 500, that would be representative of this ratio on this side over here. So what you do is you get your ruler out and you measure how long that line is. And then you just multiply by the fraction. So in this case, if you do something like that, um, let's see here. I think when I measured this line, I got 109 millimeters. And so when I multiplied this out, two-fifths of that gives me 43.6 millimeters. So come about 43 and a half millimeters over, and that locates your mixture point. So then you can draw the point there. And then once you have that point, then we have to draw a tie line. So what you want to do is you look at the tie lines that are already on your plot. We know that we don't hit it exactly, and you try to find one that it would be approximately parallel to, where it should seem reasonable to. So at that point, then, we construct a tie line across here. So with that tie line, then, we know that the two endpoints are going to represent the compositions of our raffinate and extract streams. We can also figure out how much of each of those two streams we have based upon a lever rule. Right? Because we know where our mixture point is. Tie line's going through that point. So in this case, right, so we were along, so we were along this line here. We've drawn in a tie line across here, right? We see that we're actually closer to the water side over here, which means that we're gonna have essentially more of it more of the extract than we are the raffinate. We can then measure the length of that tie line, measure the length from where we hit our two-phase uh, line over to the mixture point. Okay, right here's the mixture point. That distance divided by the total distance multiplied by the total amount of material that we have will give us the amount in the raffinate stream, which is less than in the extract stream. And then we can read off the concentrations right at the end of the tie line, piece of cake. Right? So at this point, now we know the raffinate and extract stream amounts. We know their compositions based upon reading the plot. Now we're ready to go to the second extraction unit. And for the second extraction unit, we can apply, again, our rules on this. We know that we're coming in with a pure water stream, so we're going to start here. And then from this pure water stream, then what are we going to do? In terms of figuring out where the mixture point is, right, here is the raffinate stream that's coming in. It's at the end of this tie line over here. So we draw a line between those two points. We know how much was in the raffinate stream. We know how much was in the water stream coming in. Apply our lever rule and that'll locate the mixture point. So we get a mixture point. Once we have that mixture point again then we draw a tie line. Read off the concentrations at both ends of the, our tie line where it hits this uh, two-phase envelope region. Get your ruler out, measure the total length of the tie line, measure the distance from, say, the mixture point to, say, this side over here at the water side. That'll get you your ratios, and then you can figure out the amounts from there. So you can do a lot of this directly on here. Now, you don't have to. I mean, you could sit there and you can do the mass balances. You still have to use a tie line, right? Because that's the only way we get the equilibrium data. But without having to do the other parts of the, the mass balances so much, you can do it pretty simply with just a ruler. Who did it that way? I think I, I saw yours. You did it that way. It was nice. I like that. Yeah. You know, it's, 
I just wanted to point it out because I, I had a hunch that a lot of you wouldn't, weren't going to do it that way. And so just wanted to illustrate that you could. So. Any questions about that and how you can use that? So that's why the, it's kind of kind of neat, kind of simple to do it. With that. All right. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday. We'll do course evaluations and wrap things up. Okay.